Anaphylaxis is a severe, life-threatening systemic hypersensitivity reaction. Rapid recognition and immediate intervention are essential to prevent fatal outcomes. This lecture will outline the critical steps in managing anaphylaxis. Emergency measures. Management of anaphylaxis begins with simultaneous interventions. Any triggering agent should be removed immediately. The patient should be placed in a supine position unless contraindicated. Continuous monitoring of cardiac function, pulse oximetry, and blood pressure is required. Supplemental oxygen should be administered if indicated. Vascular access should be established using large bore intravenous lines, preferably 16 or 18 gauge. A patent airway must be maintained with preparedness for endotracheal intubation, including the use of rapid sequence intubation if necessary. Adjunct airway techniques, such as awake fiber optic intubation or surgical airway, should be considered if needed. Intravenous fluid resuscitation with isotonic crystalloid solutions is recommended. Adults should receive 1,000 milliliters intravenously within the first five minutes, with additional volumes as required. Pediatric patients should receive boluses of 20 to 30 milliliters per kilogram in incremental doses. First-line medication, epinephrine. Epinephrine is the primary pharmacologic treatment and should be administered at the first suspicion of anaphylaxis. For adults, the recommended dose is 0.3 to 0.5 mg intramuscularly using a 1 to 1,000 concentration, injected into the anterolateral thigh every 5 to 10 minutes as necessary. Pediatric patients should receive 0.01 mg per kilogram intramuscularly using a 1 to 1,000 concentration in the anterolateral thigh at the same interval. Alternatively, autoinjectors such as epinephrine 0.3 mg or epinephrine junior 0.15 mg can be administered in the same manner. Second-line medications. Second-line agents should not delay the administration of epinephrine but may be used as adjunct therapy. Antihistamines such as diphenhydramine can be administered at a dose of 50 mg intravenously or orally for adults. Pediatric dosing is 1 mg per kilogram intravenously or orally. Ranitidine may be given at a dose of 50 mg intravenously or 150 mg orally for adults. Pediatric patients may receive 1 mg per kilogram intravenously or orally. Aerosolized beta agonists for bronchospasm. For patients experiencing bronchospasm, aerosolized beta agonists should be administered. Adults may receive albuterol at a dose of 2.5 mg diluted in 3 ml of normal saline, administered continuously if needed. Ipratropium bromide at 0.5 mg in 3 ml of normal saline may be repeated as necessary. For pediatric patients, the recommended doses are albuterol 2.5 mg diluted in 3 ml of normal saline, administered continuously if required, and ipratropium bromide 0.25 mg in 3 ml of normal saline, repeated as needed. Glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids do not provide immediate benefit in the acute management of anaphylaxis. However, they may be used to prevent biphasic reactions. Methylprednisolone may be administered at 125 to 250 mg intravenously for adults and 1 to 2 mg per kilogram intravenously for pediatric patients. Oral prednisone or prednisolone may be used at doses of 40 to 60 mg for adults and 1 to 2 mg per kilogram for pediatric patients. Management of refractory hypotension. In cases of refractory hypotension, Continuous intravenous epinephrine infusion should be considered. A solution is prepared by diluting 1 mg of epinephrine in 1,000 mL of normal saline or 5% dextrose in water, yielding a concentration of 1 microgram per milliliter. For adults, the infusion rate should be titrated between 1 to 10 micrograms per minute based on the hemodynamic response. Pediatric patients should receive an infusion titrated between 0.1 to 1.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Alternative vasopressors. For persistent hypotension despite fluid resuscitation and epinephrine infusion, additional vasopressors may be considered. 
Dopamine may be initiated at 5 to 20 micrograms per kilogram per minute as a continuous intravenous infusion. Norepinephrine is administered at 0.05 to 0.5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, titrated to effect. Phenylephrine may be used at doses of 1 to 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Vasopressin can be initiated at 0.01 to 0.04 units per minute. Management of patients on beta blockers. Glucagon might be beneficial for epinephrine-resistant anaphylactic shock in patients taking beta blockers. It should be used in addition to epinephrine, not as a substitute. The recommended dose is 1 to 5 mg intravenously over 5 minutes, followed by a continuous infusion of 5 to 15 micrograms per minute. Conclusion Anaphylaxis is a medical emergency requiring immediate intervention. Epinephrine remains the first-line treatment and should not be delayed. Supportive therapies, including intravenous fluids, antihistamines, beta agonists, and corticosteroids, play an adjunct role. Refractory hypotension may require continuous epinephrine infusion and additional vasopressors. Special considerations should be given to patients on beta blockers. Prompt and systematic application of these principles improves outcomes and reduces morbidity and mortality associated with anaphylaxis. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.